Hey guys, I'm here today with a different type of video. I'm going to be reviewing the game Project Winter Mobile that came out last week. Now it's a part of the new series I'm starting where I try to review games that pique my interest. Now as the name suggests, this is a mobile game, and you might also be familiar with the name Project Winter. See, Project Winter is a social deception game that's been out on PC for over three years and is a game I've never played. It's supposed to be quite like Dreadhunger, which appealed to me, with both games being set in the Arctic and the good guys needing to escape before the deadly blizzard kills them all. As you might expect from a deception game, two of the eight players are secretly traitors who work to sabotage and undermine the survivors' progress and attempt to kill all players whilst preventing their escape. Obviously, you all know I love me some Dreadhunger. <laughs> So when the developers of Project Winter Mobile reached out to me to try the game, it definitely piqued my interest. To be clear, I'm not being paid for this video, but they did set up a cute little redemption code in my name for you all to use in the app to get a small amount of currency and a cosmetic crate. I've never had a promo code in my name, so it was quite cool and exciting to type it in and redeem it by, you know, using promo code PLUMO. <laughs> anyway, uh... A couple of things to know about me before I review the actual game. Number one, I love deception games and understand how difficult it is to accurately review a deception game without spending hours and hours of the required time to pick up all the nuances of playing as the traitors, so I'll be keeping this in mind when I review this. Number two, my partner and I regularly play mobile games like Call of Duty and Among Us together, as she doesn't have a gaming laptop or PC, but her phone can run anything. It's something we love doing together, so I'm excited to review a potentially awesome new mobile game to play together. So let's start the review. When I first downloaded the game and opened it up, I was prompted to play the Survivor tutorial. The tutorial taught me how to gather resources, craft items, and repair the buildings before finally escaping on the helicopter. The game then went to the main menu. I loved the main menu's animation. My randomized scrawny arctic fella was like running away from a wolf, and I found myself just wanting to keep watching him run away. Every time he'd like get away, another arctic creature would catch up to him and he'd have to keep running. Once I was finally satisfied with watching my fella run away, I tried to launch the game. Now I played a few games with my partner first and she wasn't familiar with the server system for finding games. She was automatically shown games that were in Asia and she couldn't see the game that I'd hosted on US West. The game doesn't really explain as far as I could tell how this works, so it might be an issue for newer players that don't have someone to help them find that out. My Dreadhunger background has, of course, shown me the importance of controlling lobby language barriers, so something to consider. Anywho, we got into a lobby and enjoyed watching our characters warm up by the fire. I was very jealous of her character model. I loved the hugely fat round guy, and he made my scrawny guy feel like boring and lame. We eventually found a game though, and we started up this beginner's game. We ran around together in the snow, trusting neither of us were actually a traitor, and explored the Arctic. We managed to complete some objectives and open up bunkers. It was honestly a lot of fun. The game feels fantastic to play. Your movement is smooth and easy to control, with your character movement controls moving to where you first place your finger on the left hand side, not in like a preset stuck location like I'd seen previously in PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile. The game design was great, though we can credit most of this probably to the original Project Winter, as I expect it looked pretty similar to the one that was originally on PC. All was going well, until I returned to the helipad and found Eden lying there, dead. Next to her was another body, presumably the person who attacked her, and she had managed to take them down before she died. I was devastated. I mean, she was sitting next to me laughing when I found her body, so I pushed through my grief and escaped in the nick of time with a fellow survivor, Snowflake. It was a fun game, and after the match, we had commitments to get to, so we had to log off. But Eden told me the next day that she'd been thinking about the game a lot and was excited to play again. So we played again, and both of us were survivors once more. 
things were going fine and we crafted a weapon each and we worked on objectives, but time got the better of us and we couldn't locate the final objective, so we froze to death in the cabin together. This wasn't as an enjoyable game as the first one, so we logged off and I've, I've since played a few games myself to finish this review. See, you needed to play three games to unlock the normal mode, and that was when I realized that beginner mode actually has no traitors. It was just an aggressive survivor who had attacked Eden in our first game. We like, <laughs> when I told her we cracked up, we'd been trying so hard to work out who the traitors were in both of our games and not even trusting each other. And all the time there wasn't even a traitor. <laughs> even in the post game screen, we couldn't tell whether there was a traitor or not. So when I tried to join my first normal game, I was prompted to play through the traitor tutorial. It went for about a minute and taught me how to use like the trader hatches to teleport across the map and open trader crates to gain early advantages. It didn't explain how I was actually supposed to kill a survivor, which seemed odd, but I went into the normal game feeling somewhat ready. At least until I played my first normal game and immediately got given the traitor role. It's good to see the new player RNG runs true in Project Winter 2. This is where I experienced how Project Winter really plays. One of the explorers in the game told everyone that player five was a traitor because they placed a trap. I wasn't sure why this meant they were bad, but number five was swiftly killed by a couple of players. They didn't get a chance to defend themselves. I mean, they could have gone to the cabin and where they can't really be damaged, but they just got killed and I guess they didn't expect it. Shortly after player five's death, the same player that called out player five called out player three for attacking him. So just like that, two players were already dead. So I roamed around talking and helping the explorers, blending in a bit, whilst the original problem stirrer bragged about killing both traitors. I tried my best to steal resources and sort of delay objectives, but the explorers powered through the first task. I wasn't even sure if my teammate was one of the players who had been killed or if they were still alive. I don't know if there was a way to check that. I, I didn't work it out. Uh, I decided to branch away from the team for a bit though, and tried to go and sabotage the completed objective. I was met with a prompt that told me I didn't have enough of a resource that looked kind of like playing cards. I couldn't work out where to get it or where to find it, because you couldn't craft it in a workbench, so I went and used the trader hatch and I opened up some trader crates in my spare time. There were some cool items inside the crates, uh, but my tiny inventory meant that things were left behind. After opening a few more trader crates, I realized I was getting the card-like resource from the crates, even though I wasn't actually picking them up as an item in the crate, so to speak. So I guess there's some kind of passively gained item from doing traitor things? This wasn't explained in the traitor tutorial. At least I didn't retain the information if it was, and it made my first traitor game quite irritating, as I wasted a lot of time just trying to work out how to do the simplest of things. Anyway, I went back with my six card-like resource things and sabotaged the objective. I also left a landmine on it for good measure. <laughs> I then heard that guy who killed those two players at the start yell out for help as he was being killed by his allies. I, of course, didn't intervene. <laughs> at this point, not a whole lot happened. No objectives were completed and everyone just froze to death and I won. It felt good to win, but I really didn't understand why the explorers hadn't completed the other objectives or what I'd done that earned that victory, if that makes sense. This was answered in my next two explorer games. Some of the objectives are pretty damn hard, especially for a new player. There's one that requires you to memorize four pictures take a shovel out into the snow, locate the location in the picture, and then dig up the items that are in a specific circled spot on that location's photo. Needless to say, the explorers wasted so much time trying to do this. It probably isn't that hard, but my goodness, it felt impossible to do in game. I mean, I have a pretty terrible memory and I had no idea where to go anyway, so it was just rough. I mean, in comparison, there are also a bunch of fiddly mechanics to learn in Dreadhunger 2 that were absolutely worth the effort. So I'd compare that to Project Winter and say, with time, I'll improve. I was murdered in that first normal Explorer game and I became a ghost. 
It looked like I could create things like campfires, but it wasn't clear how to do that, at least from a first look. In my final Survivor game, my team of fancy looking explorers managed to do the shovel dig up task pretty easily, and I managed to successfully repair the final objective. I then sprinted across the map over to the cabin and called for help on the radio. I then ran back across to the helicopter where my team was waiting for me in the helicopter. But after I struggled to get into the helicopter for just a second, I was left behind and the helicopter just like took off and my team escaped without me. If any of you who are in that game are listening, you're bloody bastards. I did, however, find a bunch of guns and had fun learning to shoot them before I froze to death. <laughs> in my limited experience in Project Winter Mobile, I'd say it's pretty bloody good for a free deception mobile game. It's an excellent substitute for Among Us with a lot more depth and your character handles very well to the point where you actually enjoy moving your character. For all of you who love Dreadhunger on PC, Project Winter Mobile is a brilliant option for you to get your deception game fix on your mobile phone. This was a big selling point for me. I love Dreadhunger, but I can't play it with my partner, nor can I play it while sitting on a bed. So boom, Project Winter Mobile is perfect. It does require sound and a microphone is useful to directly talk to your fellow players, but the microphone isn't needed as most players I played with use the in-game prompts along the top right hand side that signal preset messages to nearby players. Project Winter Mobile gave Eden and I a new type of game to play together on mobile that feels great to actually play and we can have fun playing it together. I still have a lot to learn, but all the pieces are there for me to start putting together. I just haven't made enough effort to do so yet. I very much enjoyed my first Project Winter experience. If you found this review useful or you just enjoyed watching it, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you all very much for watching. Good luck out in the Arctic and watch out for moose.